Hello everyone, this is Luke Martz and today we are going to continue with a exercise that we did in another video. Uh, this is a structure that is for uh, use as a crane with a hoist on the center. So here what we're going to do is to do the analysis. I used to do the analysis here because uh, the frame analysis tool it is uh, a light uh, version of an FEA and we don't need really to do details like uh, weldings or ball connections and all that. So you can do on a first state after you do your skeleton and place the elements that you think that are going to work, you can double check the design and make that decision to change the elements and all that depending on the on the results of the analysis so by starting on the same type tab of the design uh, where are the frame generator you can find this um, analysis so um, the first thing is to create an, an, a simulation the first uh, option is to uh, do a static a static analysis or a model analysis. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more model in another video, but now we are going to talk about static analysis. Uh, you can rename the simulation uh, if you want, and if you have um, uh, representations, positions, and level of details already created on the model, you can use them. But in this case, this is really simple, so not necessary. So as you can see, Inventor is uh, creating like the same skeleton that we did for create the, the, the structure. But in this case, the elements uh, has a connection between them those uh, elements have a connection between them with something called rigid links and it is placed automatically uh, inventor recognize the elements but it only recognize uh, frame generator um, elements if you uh, did the sketch of the beam and ex did the extrusion it is not going to work so um, that's basically because inventor cannot understand that it is a, a frame element uh, and it cannot extract the information, the valuable information that we have for do it uh, from a frame analysis, which is not only about uh, to have the standards and all that. It is more, uh, it, it goes more uh, on, on, on deep. On, on this on, on this okay so for start uh, as usual on FEA we have in order from left to right um, the tools that we are going to need so the first thing that we are going to see is the properties in this case for example you can see that uh, here appears the the elements and well if you check the video about the creation of this model we um, did most of these components with the reuse tool and if, if 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 we do it in the other way that just picking the different elements we're going to see here a, a more extended list and maybe a little bit uh, more complex uh, to read but in this case it is not because we are reusing all the elements so it is as simple as I have just these elements okay so if you go picking each component each uh, beam it is going to be highlighted on red on the graphic area you're going to see the inertial moment the moment of inertia 
and other um, information about the beam that inventor can read because it is a frame uh, generator um, model right so then we have the material of course uh, actually we have steel for all them if you want to change it you need to go to to the, to the frame generator uh, model and change the material uh, when you are editing the the element uh, by the moment we don't have in this version 2018 uh, the option for overwrite in this uh, kind of analysis uh, as well as on regular uh, FEA okay so then we have the fix we have several types uh, I'm going to fix this guy here um, check that the direction of my fix is like uh, in the in the way how the the gravity is right now so that this is not def definitely the behavior of what I'm looking as uh, my gravity so I'm going to modify it and I'm going to select the C direction and use the standard magnitude for gravity okay so I'm going to go to the constraints options and I'm going to delete this guy I'm going to create a new one and it is oriented as, as I want okay since I'm pretending to have some uh, bolts here on these plates I would like to to do a fixed constraint on each uh, node of these elements okay so I'm going to use a fixed right here unfortunately every time we want to fix an element we're going to need to do this but well that that's one way you can also for simplifications uh, you can just choose to, to select this this point I'm, I'm going to do it in that way for go faster in any ways uh, for have a more precise uh, behavior or result about this small element we can do uh, later uh, an, an FEA with mesh and all that so I'm going to just do the fix right here always placing it on the on the plate I don't want to to touch the node of the of the beam Would be great to have uh, to 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 have the chance to place all these elements without going every single time to pick the the fixed constraint tool, but it's okay. There we go. Okay, so there are other types of uh, constraints, for example, pin, floating, and some customs uh, that you can select exactly the degrees of freedom of your of your constraint. Then we have force and continuous load. So I'm going to, in this case select uh, a force, a punctual force uh, we can um, 
place it based on the reference or the distance we can change the direction in this case the angle and this other angle I'm going to keep it as it is right now and by double clicking we can see uh, the values so we can choose here a magnitude let's say that it is going to be this one uh, this angle doesn't matter so it can be zero as well 180 degrees and the offset is this one we have also the option for place the vectors and all that and about the offset if you don't know the length of this element I to be to be honest I, I don't so you can select the option for the offset as, as a relative so I want it in the center just to type 0.5 and that's it okay so we have the gravity and we have the force I'm going to save this and well we can also add uh, a moment and well the continuous load which is uh, very cool true I really like it but in this exercise uh, we're not going to, to talk much about it okay so we can now jump directly to simulate let's give a chance it is really fast and that's something that I really like because you don't need to to wait uh, for example, for for um, uh, generating the mesh and calculating and do um, uh, several passes, doing the redefinement of the of the meshing and all that. So, of course, it is going to give the same uh, kind of the same uh, results. They are very close between each other, but once uh, need uh, more time and this one is perfect for uh, for 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 half uh, the model that you want without wasting wasting too much time on analysis so you can on a fast way on on, on the first step of the design have uh, the correct elements for your model so talking about the results we have several of them the first one is the displacement we don't have much displacement here which is cool unfortunately we don't have uh, uh, this the, the safety factor in this option so you are going to need to uh, understand and go through uh, the different uh, results doing the analysis but just by for example having the displacement as a small displacement I can uh, feel comfortable with this with this first uh, analysis and jump into doing more detailing and then go through uh, uh, directly uh, an FEA with a with the usual tool for for elements right thank you so much for watch this fast and and short video uh, hopefully um, I'm going to upload soon uh, more versions of this and if you want to see the detailing with the with the with the ball connection or you want to see uh, how this model has been done 
um, I'm going to 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 left uh, the links on the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching the video and have a nice one. Bye.